It's Tuesday, July 26th. I'm David Song, currency analyst with Daily FX, and we're seeing a meaningful move lower in the dollar yen and may foreshadow what we may see following the Federal Reserve as well as the Bank of Japan interest rate decisions scheduled for the days ahead. But we did get some interesting headlines coming out of Japan with local headlines suggesting that we may see a smaller than expected fiscal stimulus package, even though we've seen some big numbers being thrown around with speculation that we may see Prime Minister Abe unveil maybe a 10 trillion, maybe even as big as a 20 trillion yen fiscal stimulus package. So we'll see how that measure will fare. Of course, we'll wait for those announcements. But in regards to the Bank of Japan interest rate decision, we've got some interesting rhetoric from the finance minister, from Mr. Taro Azo, largely going against the grain here, especially against his counterparts, saying that monetary policy should be left to Governor Kuroda and company, and largely talking up central bank independence. So, of course, we'll see if we get anything meaningful, anything new to chew on from the BOJ on Friday. But for now, we'll continue to watch some of the downside risk as we're seeing the dollar yen largely fail to preserve the recent series of higher highs and higher lows that we carved out earlier on this month. So we may have had or carved out a near-term top here given the failed attempt to close above this 106.90, 107.00 handle here. So on that, we'll watch that as near-term resistance. And of course, all fits in with this sort of broader bearish context that we're watching from the beginning of the year. So we'll watch some of the downside risk. We're dabbling below a near-term juncture, but I need a closing price below this near-term juncture that I'm watching right now, this 104.20 zone to open up some of the downside risk. Next region of interest comes in right around that 103.20 into the 103.60 zone. So we'll see if we can clear that once we get through some of these interest rate decision. And again, followed by 102.10 to the downside. But not only are we still seeing this bearish context in terms of price, but you know, I had to adjust this trend line. But for now, it looks that we're getting a nice turn in the R size. Well, may all be to preserve this sort of bearish formation that we have on the oscillator from all the way back in June of last year. So I'll continue to watch this bearish context, not only for price, but also for the momentum indicator. We'll see if we can take out some of the downside targets. But as we're going into month end, of course, be aware of some position adjustments that may influence influence price action, but I'm certainly keeping a very close eye on market participation here and we are seeing some interesting dynamics, some healthy numbers, if you will, in terms of market participation. But we have seen some extreme readings in retail sentiment with, of course, sentiment hitting the highest or an extreme reading, most extreme reading that we saw since back in 2012. We have certainly narrowed off of that with the retail crowd flipping back net long here, dollar yen. So, you know, we'll see if we can move back towards some of those recent extreme readings. But currently right now, we're seeing a plus 1.63 read as 62% of traders are long. And you know, here's sort of the kicker. We're seeing long positions 27% higher from the previous day with positions 29.8% higher from the previous week, all while open interest is 14.4% 14, 14 higher against the monthly average. So again, still seeing some good participation here. You know, My only bit of concern is as we fail to retain this near-term series of higher highs, higher lows from earlier this month, and of course, retail crowd as you're trying to fade some of the weakness here, I'm a little bit more concerned that we may be starting on a new near-term trend. We'll continue to watch this near-term series of lower highs and lower lows. We'll see if retail crowd will get caught on caught on the wrong side of the market. As of course, you know, we continue to see this diverging path for monetary policy, but not sure if we're gonna get anything meaningful this time around from the BOJ nor from the Federal Reserve. So, you know, in terms of Fed expectations, you know, if you guys are watching Fed Funds Futures, still seeing limited expectations for a 2016 Fed rate hike. So, you know, the big thing that we'll watch tomorrow will be the vote count. We'll see whether or not we get another unanimous vote. But even beyond that, we'll watch the language. We'll see if the Fed will give us any clues, a greater willingness, if you will, to normalize monetary policy at their next quarterly interest rate decision in September. But, you know, my big focus here is, of course, given the uncertainty surrounding the fiscal outlook, of course, with the presidential elections coming in November, I'm a little bit concerned that we may see the Fed continue to try to buy some more time. We may see them largely endorse this wait and see approach. So we may see the dollar face some further headwinds, especially if we get more of the same out of the Federal Reserve this time around. So we'll watch some of the downside risk, but you know, we did see some better than expected data from earlier this morning, new home sales, uh, even with, again, the uh, even though we did see the S&P, the S&P, Case-shiller home price end is coming in a little bit softer than expected. We did also see some nice numbers in regards to the conference board's consumer confidence in uh, consumer consumer confidence survey. So of course we'll see if this will encourage the Federal Reserve to adopt a more upbeat outlook for the economy. I'm just not sure if we're ready to see any material shift in terms of Fed voting 
to encourage bets for a September rate hike. So we'll see how that will all fare. But you know, even though we dip below this near-term region of interest, near-term support right around 1250, 1260, I need a closing price below this near-term region to look for a larger pullback. But looks though we may continue to track sideways here going into the Federal Reserve rate decision tomorrow. You know, as we have little in the docket, of course, we will watch the CPI figures coming out of Australia later this evening. We'll see if that will fuel expectations of seeing additional monetary support out of the Reserve Bank of Australia, who's up with their interest rate decision next week. But for now, we'll keep a very close eye on again what the Fed will lay out. We'll see if we get anything new to chew on. However, if we get more of the same, may see dollar fee some near-term headwinds, especially as market participants continue to push out expectations for the next Fed rate hike. But with all that said here, again, stay nimble as we're going into the month end. May see some wacky price action uh, going into the month end, again, based on position adjustments. But for now, we'll continue to watch again some of these key developments. We'll see how this will all fare for the month ahead as we're continuing watching, watching to see how the monetary policy outlook will continue to take shape, especially on a global level, as we're seeing a lot of speculation of not only additional easing from the RBA, but same story for the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. We'll see if the Bank of England will also deliver on their promise of resuming and reestablishing their easing cycle. But with that out of the way, best of luck on all your trades and have a great day.